Hello gorgeous, I'm the Fairy Voice Mother and today I'm going to be reacting to Corey Taylor performing Snuff Acoustic. Corey Taylor is the lead singer of the band Slipknot. I'll never forget the first time I heard a Slipknot song. <laughs> I was on a caravan holiday with my mum and some family friends. Their son was about the same age as me. Me and this little boy had been instructed to go off and play on the swings. We didn't really have much in common, so we started talking about music. And at that time, I pretty much exclusively listened to Shakira, Destiny's Child, and classical music, because I was big into flute. <laughs> he proceeded to tell me how none of that was real music and that I must listen to Slipknot. And so armed with his mp3 player, he proceeded to play me a Slipknot track. And I just remember thinking, ouch. And he was telling me about Satan and sacrificing goats. I had a somewhat tumultuous introduction to Corey Taylor. Times have changed and I have grown up to thoroughly enjoy metal. Eight year old Lolly would be horrified by the sounds that come out of my mouth these days. <laughs> But the inclusion of the word acoustic does insinuate that this might be slightly more tame than some of the Slipknot material, but we'll see. I can't imagine it's completely clean. I'm gonna play you a very heavy song for me. <laughs> this is hard to get through, so I'm obviously gonna need all the help I can get on this. Are you ready? There's definitely some metal vocalists in that audience. Bury all your secrets in my skin. Come away with innocence, even with my sins. Oh. The air around me still feels like a cage. The sound of the audience singing along with him is so perfect and consistent, it almost sounds like a vocal effect. The atmosphere and the energy that that provides is sensational. Love is just a camouflage resembles It's like his own choir. So if you love me, let me go Run away before I know My heart is too so dark to care I can't destroy what isn't there Deliver me into my fate Wow If I'm alone, I cannot hate I don't deserve to have you my smile was taken long ago If I can change, I hope I'll never know Ah, oh, he turns that on so much control Wow he has so much control over the tissue he uses to distort his voice, he can slip in and out of it with no preparation, no change to physical posture, there's nothing more intense happening in the face, there's nothing that's changed here about the... Well, hang on a minute. Oh. Oh, Okay, I was just going to mention something very boring about how his face and body and neck doesn't change and then when I was thinking neck, I looked at his neck and Good lord, that's a neck. Girth on that neck, my god! It's like a tree! Beautiful, solid individual. Oh my god, look at it! It's so muscly! Sternocleid and mastoids are Enormous. There's a group of three muscles in our neck called our scalene muscles, like a scalene triangle. And they play a really important role in supporting and allowing our movement, ranging from our cervical vertebrae all the way down to our upper two ribs. And as you can imagine, this area is very important for singing. Because he's so strong and supported extrinsically, I can imagine that does wonders for the range of movement intrinsically. <laughs> there's definitely a correlation between having a big neck and then having a big voice within it. And the way that he's choosing to move that rather large voice and fill up the spaces in here with the delicate distortion now and then, it's gorgeous. Controlled voice distortion is just one of my most favorite sounds in the whole world. It's just so raw and so acutely amplifies any message of pain or struggle. Like, ah, mm, uh, mm, mm. All of that was ripped apart 
Notice this beautiful range of movement here. The cheeks lift, the jaw drops and protrudes. By moving the mouth in this way, you get even more space in your neck. Eh? As opposed to E. Angling the chin down just naturally constricts the space in which your voice has to move. Save your breath, I will not care. In these slightly more thick, intense, distorted moments, he does a very similar organisation of space to David Draymond. I think the main feature of this vocal quality is a tongue manipulation quite far back as opposed to a relaxed tongue position which would be this has loads more character mainly because the way that it amplifies the resonance you've got like a little dip and then the sides of the tongue comes up then the voice travels and hits the roof of the mouth in this kind of echoey space obviously on a very small scale but whatever they're both doing it definitely impacts resonance so that makes most sense to me I almost banished long ago I took the death of us to let you go This is definitely real As in like his kids felt this You can tell, you can't fake it So break yourself against my stones and spit your pity in my soul. You never need any help. You saw me how to save yourself. And I will listen to your shame. You ran away, you're all the same. Angels lie to keep control. I just love it when someone is so physically skilled to the point where it creates such a transparent window to their soul, whether it's music, visual arts, dancing. One of the most incredible gifts that comes with high levels of competency in one of those fields is just a unique and magical opportunity to witness someone's rawest emotions. Like Many people that are very proficient in at least one vein of the arts generally share the notion that they're grateful for their ability to express themselves because it's very difficult to display the same level of complexity and nuance that we experience emotionally. And the wonderful thing is, even for those of us who don't have a particular affinity for artistic expression, we can witness other people do it and just watching someone in that space is enough for us to feel connected so that we're on the same kind of journey and we get this wonderful sense of unity and a feeling of emotional validation because sometimes we can look at someone expressing something exactly the way it feels on the inside even if we can't do it ourselves. So I can imagine this performance has brought a great deal of solace to people who have also experienced this. Notice the onset of that line was aspirate. And I will listen to your shame. Reason being is that when we distort our voice, the tissue flaps more ferociously than when we do a clean singing sound. And that tissue is not going to flap itself. Therefore, we might need increased breath flow. If the folds never had closure to begin with because we started with breath, then they would have advantageous conditions to continue flapping the good flap. 
It's very impressive for someone with a voice as big and thick as his to belt an A the way that he does for air. So you can really see him physically hold on to his voice there, kind of leaning in quickly to that A, stretching it up to make sure his voice doesn't break. And then to sustain that big note. Nice, strong, powerful, round F sharp. He does something which I refer to as a physical motion tactic. I do need to think of a new name for that because I do appreciate that the acronym is PMT. It's not good connotations in my experience. But a physical motion tactic is where a singer uses a part of their body, whether it be motion in the lip, in the arm, bending into the knees, while they sustain a long note to ensure that they don't think about the note as being held. Because when we think about holding on a note, sometimes we can get quite stiff and tense when we think about holding on because the note is not being held, the note is continuing to move, the vocal folds need to flap at consistent speed to keep that note ticking over. So by continuously moving the lip the way that he's doing there, he's encouraging the voice to flow. Some singers do this completely unconsciously. They'll just move a part of their body and they don't know why. They might not even know they're doing it, but it does, in my experience, result in smoother sustained notes. Anyway, what are you guys up to now? I'm moving. The next time you see me, it will be in Fairy Cave 2.0. A lot less background noise and screaming and buses and fights. Everything's going to be a lot more consistent and I'll be able to focus on being the very best fairy voice mother I could possibly be. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. If you're not done and you want a little bit more voicey analysis today, I would definitely recommend checking out my analysis of David Draymond performing Sound of Silence so that you can perhaps draw some correlations of your own between the two vocalists because I do believe there are many similarities. If there are any other singers you would like to see me react to, please do let me know down below in the comments or over on my Discord as it is all Always my pleasure. Have a wonderful day my darling, I love you so much and I cannot wait to see you in the next video.